Good evening again from European Identity Conference 2009. My name is Felix Gaitkins, and this time I have with me Master Architect at Sun, Philip Lafoe. Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't see your presentation today because I had uh, something going on in a parallel track. But uh, I heard you talked about uh, how to extend identity in the cloud. So uh, give me the rundown. Yeah, it, it's true, you know, uh, the cloud is a very hype thing. And uh, so when people ask what is important about it, it's, it's just about, cr you know, breaking the, the, the border. And uh, so I took the sample of the Middle East Castle and I say, you know, look for the city of Carcassonne and you will, you will understand that this is your exact today architecture with the double firewall and so on. So if you want to move to the next level, which means exposing your identity to the cloud, you have to expect, you, you have to break the border, you have to accept that you know information will be outside of your firewall and so you have to rely on things that you don't control which is uh, something most of the people are not ready to do this being said if, if we're willing to uh, you know build something that is equivalent to the gsm network with uh, two billion users where you just land in any country and your phone is working and do the same thing at the it level we have to accept the idea that we're not controlling everything so um, is there a paradigm shift that we need to get used to, or is, there, uh, is it just technology? No, is it, you know, there, there, there is definitely a paradigm. So the first thing is, you know, we, we have to come back on much more simple things. Like people are talking about roles, and, you know, I, I said that role will never work in, in, you know, in the cloud. And the reason is just because they're too complex. I, I don't see the value to build a special abstraction to, you know, collect three information about your users that is a European citizen above 18 years and, you know, has no criminal record, and to create a role for that. It's, it's much easier to ask for a request for the attributes. Whether you call that claim or attribute exchange is the same thing. But building a new abstraction is, is only creating business for consulting company and software vendor. But I don't think it will help people to, to solve the equation. Uh, there's uh, uh, several other um, quite interesting um, questions when you get to the cloud. One of them is where the identity data is actually stored and how it can get transferred. You know, there's, you, know, you being a French guy, there's, uh, there's some uh, restrictions uh, in France and in Germany about that, that you actually cannot... Um, transfer uh, an identity information outside of the country um, unless you know th there are some specific uh, uh, there's some specific laws about that so how do you actually address that and how do you actually address the whole provisioning part do you actually need provision so uh, there are many questions in, in your, 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 your question yeah, the, <laughs> the, the first one is about where my data set you know and, and that's not a real issue because uh, today we have the technology to implement the global IP and make sure that, you know, depending on who is asking the questions, the data will sit in, in one given location. Now, provisioning is another one, obviously. Uh, honestly, I think provisioning will never work in the cloud, not because we cannot do provisioning in the cloud, but because this will never be compliant with the level of scale we're looking for. You know, if, if we try to do click and buy things, you know, and the person has to be pre-provisioned in the store to buy things, it will never work. You know, when you get in the store, you look for something you like, you buy it. So it means we have to do on-the-fly provisioning, which is what we do when you land somewhere with your DSM. You, you, you don't need to have a, a contract with Turkcell when you go in Turkey on vacation, and you don't have to call your operator to, to, to pre-provision you before you land. It's, it's done on the fly at first usage. So I think this, this is the only way to solve the equation. Now, going back about how we, we guarantee that the data will not be misused is something different. And, and that's one of the key issues in the identity space, which is if you give your data an attribute about yourself to someone else, you just have no idea what this person will do with this information. Uh, and the email is a good sample where, you know, you, we receive spam because many people who should not have your email address have it. Uh, and it's the same thing for any uh, identity data. So it's true that in order to build this big picture for the cloud, we need to have some governance framework that allow us to express under which condition someone who has an attribute about you can release it, and also what is the condition that someone can accept it. Maybe keep it in memory, not write on this, keep it for six months and then delete it and so on. Yeah, this part is true, is still missing in the technology we have today. For the rest of it, I think we have everything. Yeah, your colleague Eva had a really interesting presentation on that uh, yesterday about a new protocol that she has uh, proposed called ProtectSurf, um, which, well, I hope uh, this is going to take off because um, we'll definitely need uh, buy-in from all sides to make this one happen. Well, Philip, thanks a lot and enjoy thank the you. rest of the show. Yeah, thank you very much.